Welcome to the School of New Age Custom Farming. Oh, the school? <laughs> yeah. Anywho, so I'm going to do a series, start doing a series here on our YouTube channel of interviewing other young farmers. But before I started interviewing other people, these two get to be the subject of interrogation. So boys, please start by telling me about your egg story. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're here. <laughs> we haven't left. We're not allowed to do anything else. No, I'm just kidding. We started working on the farm and we haven't ever quit. No, like what's the story of the farm? Like what you guys all the, do? You need They're so annoying. Okay, how did Elsing Farm start? I don't know, I wasn't around. <laughs> Do you have the history of Elsing Farms? Do you guys know anything? No. No. Okay, well, I actually Elsing, don't. Elsing Farm started in 1865, according to what information your grandpa and dad gave me for the website. Okay. What else do you guys know about the farm? I, th I think it was given, the plot of land was given for the being in the Civil War. The second 40 was. The first 40 was bought or settled or whatever and the second 40 was given for instead of paying for fighting in the civil war i think that's the information we have <laughs> okay and then yeah. we here. love war <laughs> <laughs> okay so <laughs> you're shut up. so you're you guys are what generation on the farm <laughs> Seven? Seven. Eight. You guys are so bad at this. Yeah. Well, you didn't give me any questions to prepare from. I, so before this, I went to Culver's and got us dinner, and I literally left them this sheet, which is my outline. <laughs> did they look at it? You what did? do you think? No. Yes, I did. I looked at it as I walked into it, and I just started watching YouTube. Okay, so you guys are the seventh generation. Please I know. Turn that light down. <laughs> For the love of God. I know that information Ugh. about you guys. What did your dad do on the farm before it became New Age? Milk cows. Yep, it was a dairy farm. They, at the end, they were milking 130 cows in a stanchion barn, losing money every day. So. They decided to quit doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and then what started? Well, they, what started New Age? Well, like, okay, so you, they sold the cows, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. what? I think, I believe it was Dad and Tiger were at an auction and they both wanted a piece of equipment and, but they didn't, neither of them had enough acres to justify it and they bought it together and ever since then is, here we are. Yeah. New Age Custom Farming. I with, believe that was. With these hooligans is possibly the seventh generation, but with the knowledge that they're spitting right now, maybe they won't be allowed to be in the seventh generation. Yeah, I don't think we can get fired. Yeah, we try every day. Okay, so you guys are born, and then what? You just farm from day one? Pretty yep. much. <laughs> Child labor. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll share my agriculture story and how I <laughs> how I got brought into this mess of these people. So, Avery, how did we meet? Let's start with that, and that's how I <laughs> became involved. Yeah, her father came to me and told me that he would pay me weekly large amounts, large lump sums of money. In order to date his daughter. If that's the case, then why did you ghost me after two weeks? Because the money wasn't worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Came back and started paying more. 
I had to call him. What's the next question? Well, no, my... we we had to renegotiate. That wasn't. <laughs> Well, it was a trial run. Okay, wait, actually, go back to, I want to know, like, what was your childhood like on the farm? Terrible. <laughs> you guys are so negative. No, I drank I a lot of Roundup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it was all good. And fun. A lot of riding dirt bikes, a lot of messing around. Yep. We always had dirt bikes. It's amazing. We're actually, it's amazing we're still alive. <laughs> yeah. Four wheelers, dirt bikes. Go karts for a while. Guns. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty well unsupervised. <laughs> <laughs> Basically every farm kid's life. Yeah. yeah. When mom got sick of us, she'd send us to the farm. What so about we were at the farm a lot <laughs> every day. <laughs> what about when you guys had a bike to the farm from town? That was the worst experience of my life. Yeah. Hands down. You can't you can't even say it was that bad. No, it wasn't well. You didn't It was not. bad for me, so it was really bad for you. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so you grew, you've you always been part of, like, on the farm as kids. Like, you were always there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then in high school is when Avery and I met. But my egg story starts not like theirs. I was not born on a farm or into a farm family. My grandparents had a dairy farm, and then that was really it. Um, when my grandpa passed away, they sold the cows. We saw the farm. But that was really my own, like, only intro to agriculture until high school when I joined FFA and that's when I met Avery at an FFA field trip when we had to haul garbage back to the high school. Do you remember that? Yeah, what'd you do? Throw Emily in the back of the truck or what? <laughs> no, Telford paid me to <laughs> Nobody's paying you to have me in your life. Everybody's paying. <laughs> no. So that's how we met and then Avery ghosted me, so that sucked, but whatever. Here we are. You gotta really gotta stop getting hung up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We could really like it's been seven years. We could move on from the fact that you didn't talk to me. So I'm scarred from that experience. <laughs> I'm <sure>. Clearly. <laughs> And so then anyway, I went to um, UW Madison to study animal science and agriculture. Yeah, she's no. better than us. <laughs> I forgot. And she dumps trucks for minimum wage. Yeah. <laughs> it's not minimum wage. <laughs> so, anywho, so don't go to college. No, I went to UW Madison for animal science and life sciences. <laughs> Animal science and life sciences communication with the business. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. So don't go to <laughs> Well, let me oh, wait. How much better word? <laughs> <laughs> okay, animal science and uh, like the egg business side of things. And I worked in a corporate job for a while, and then I started my own business, and I dumped trucks on the side. So <laughs> <was> screw you. <laughs> I also have my own marketing <coughs> business as well, and Prairie Ray's Beef the Beef that we sell. But anywho, while I was in college, I was still friends with Dalton, their cousin, and Mason also went to a version of college called Short Course at UW-Madison, so you can't even say anything. There wasn't much learning. <laughs> Oh, that was a good time. And Mason hauled my beer kegs around for me because I needed somebody to help me with that. And then all of a sudden, here's Avery and I back in each other's lives. And now yep, we're here. And she lived like within throwing distance of Camp Randall. So I thought I'd better start talking to her again to go to football. Need some free parking. Yep. And that's why you can't even park where I lived. And that's why I had Mason carry all the beer kegs for me was for football games. Anywho, what do we do now in life? Avery, what do you do now? Watch YouTube and find out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we farm. We usually just <laughs> farm enough to get a YouTube video and then just quit. Yep. We're YouTubers now. Yep. You guys are not YouTubers now. Yeah, we're not good YouTubers. <laughs> no one said we're good at it. <laughs> you guys are each going to answer this. So well, formulate your answer while he's talking. Well, I would say that... I mean, we have we have some acres of our own that we run, and then we also do some custom farming. And the most of our custom farming that we do is uh, like chopping, like hay and corn silage. 
we don't really do any custom planting or custom harvesting of combining. like combining because we've got enough of our own to stay busy. I don't, I really don't think there's enough money in it to like, like if we're planting other people's crops, we're not planting our own and that's hurting our yields. And then we really just don't have enough. But after we get done chopping corn silage, we don't have enough time to to get our crops harvested and do other people's stuff. So it's really the only custom work we do is chopping. And I think that with like custom planting and custom combining, you either kind of have to do your own, have enough to do your own, or you have to do that's what you do. It, you you can't. It's hard to do both. Have both your have your own answer, of really. of a decent amount. Yeah. Okay. And it's a little bit cutthroat because a lot of people have a planter and a lot of people have a combine. Well, the other thing too, I feel like with the custom farming that is done of like the hay and corn silage is also because we live in an area where there's a lot of dairy farms, but not a lot of them own this stuff to do that part of it but like new age has all the stuff to do it the 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 thing with like harvesting like hay for instance or alfalfa is like if you have like if you're a big dairy like or have a large amount of hay that needs to be harvested it needs to be done in like a really timely manner like you can't drag it out for a week otherwise your crop it, like the quality just goes downhill super fast and then your milk production obviously drops so you have to have pretty large equipment to get it done in a timely manner and that large equipment is really expensive for you know what it is so like to own it all yourself i mean you have to i don't know i mean it it obviously can be done but it just seems that around here the the herd sizes aren't it's like they're, they're, too, they're, they're too big to do it themselves, but they're not big enough to really... I don't want to say they're not big enough to own their own equipment, but... Well, it, and manning the equipment. It, yeah. That, and that's your biggest struggle. Like maintenance and and just pe putting people in it to, to operate it is, you know, half the battle. Well, and I feel like New Age, you guys have like a good flow of like you know like this person's getting done now and then like you have the same flow throughout the summer then too mm -hmm. of like the order mm -hmm. you go in which helps yeah that's not it's like when too. we start first crop we start with whoever wants to start first and we have an order boom boom we go through them and then second crop it's that same order because the crop is timed it got mowed 30 days ago 30 you know what i mean every so you kind of bang them out that way but that changes once in a while but the most part is pretty close okay besides having new age and working at new age what else do you do for uh getting some coin um so mason and one of my my classmates brandon sprecher and i um bought out a local guy that had a custom spraying operation so we bought all his equipment from him and then that's what my business partner Mason and I biz Mason and I's business partner Brandon did was run that guy's spring business. It's Eagle Valley Egg. He ran the he ran the spring division. So when it came up for sale, we all kind of talked and we bought New Age's sprayer from New Age, and then we bought and then we bought all of their Eagle Valley's equipment too. And so now we have a custom spraying operation that we we also run in the summer, and that's that's my whole that's my job in the summer is doing that. So we spray all of all of our own stuff, and then like half of like half of what we spray in a year is probably New Age's stuff, and then the other half is is like custom spraying for other people. So it keeps us pretty busy and. Like I said, that's that's pretty much my job all summer. I don't really get involved in the chopping too much anymore. I used to be in a lot more, but that spring has gotten pretty busy, so. And I'm not the biggest fan of chopping. So. No. 
I mean, it's fine. I'll do it when I'm needed. You know, I have no problem helping out, but I'd rather be in my sprayer. Yeah, usually, <clears throat> you're usually in the sprayer all summer, and I'm usually in my airflow, but that that is not base either. That's not ours. That's new age. New ages. Yeah, but the other us out of the choppers. Yeah, <laughs> for a little bit. Maybe someday we'll get into the dry fertilizer, but that's pretty. Need a lot of money to operate that, so to have a fertilizer bought at good prices, and it's a, it's a risky business to be in, but there could be some reward in it too. The other part of custom farming too is one of the dairies in the area, New Age Custom raises their heifers, and then we buy their bull calves, which is another thing that we do then is um, we have our direct-to-consumer beef business, Prairie Raised Beef, that just started this year. Hopefully we'll be able to sell soon outside of the state of Wisconsin, but right now we only sell in the local area. Um, that's just another thing that we added. Um, my thing that I like to do is talk to consumers about agriculture. So it's like my way to also do some of the things that I like. And that was the prairie raised beef stuff is kind of cool. It was, you know, it's, it was off to a little bit of a slow start because I mean, you just got to get your, get in with people, you know, it's people, Creatures of habit, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's hard to try new things, you know, when you are happy where you're at. But I would say this, those Christmas bundles you did worked really nice and sold quite a few of those, I would say. And it's it's kind of taken off now. So I think it's going to be cool. It's a good opportunity. I have some other things related to that that I want to do, but I have to build up some capital before I can start that. So we'll talk about that when I have some more money to do it. Yeah, so buy beef. <laughs> yeah, or just watch Eat this beef. YouTube channel too. That helps. But the whole point whoa, of... Whoa, whoa. We're, we need well, I'm not giving you guys money for tractor pulling parts just yet. Anywho. Uh -huh. We're the, the content creators <laughs> here. Without us, you don't have anything. <laughs> Well, I have a lot of headaches with you two, too, so. Anyway. Anywho, the whole point of, like, this series that I want to do, though, is talking about how, like, young people in agriculture, I feel like there's such a stigma of, like, when people learn that we're farmers or hear that we're involved in agriculture. I made a TikTok about this today. I was in um, my marketing class in college, which was in the business school, and I, like, said that I was an animal science major, and the people looked at me like what the heck is that and like don't understand agriculture at all so I feel like when people hear that like young people are in agriculture or like if we talk to anyone on the street that's like our age a lot of them don't understand agriculture at all and just think like farmers are no offense but old people old guys and they don't understand that like young people can also be farmers but we also have like interests outside of agriculture and stuff and like we're normal people so anywho the whole point of this is to show that there are young people in agriculture and we're also normal people so i have some rapid fire questions well first of all what are your guys's interests outside of agriculture and like off the farm push light yeah. <laughs> drinking beer yeah and wasting bullets so. yeah uh I don't, we do a lot of tractor pulling, as you see in the YouTube videos. Um, Side by siding. Yeah, um, we got rangers and razors and snowmobiling. If it actually ever snows, well, it snows, but then it all rains and then it melts and then it snows and it melts, and so that kind of sucks. But mm -hmm. um, boating, get out the pontoon in the winter, in the winter, in the, winter, <laughs> in the yeah, summer. Winter rip. Yep. Yeah. Not really into fishing, don't have the patience for hunting, so no, absolutely not. My interests off the farm include shopping, drinking wine, going to fun restaurants, more shopping, more drinking, no, like going to yoga, bothering Avery, <laughs> bothering Avery, going to yoga, like I am big into fitness and stuff as well, cooking, so like, yes, we're involved in agriculture, but we also have normal interests. Um, anyway. We're into fitness too. You guys are not into yeah. fitness. Besides Huge into the fitness. Fitting fit, fit fit that culvers in your mouth, in your yeah. gut. <laughs> okay, rapid fire question. Um, okay, relating to that, what's your favorite hobby or thing outside of agriculture to do? Answer Tractor it now. Tractor pulling. Okay, answer it now. Tractor pulling. 
Mine's hanging out with friends and having fun. You don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> looking for friends. Looking, looking for friends <laughs> to hang out with. Okay, what is your favorite part about farming and being involved in agriculture? Mm, all the money. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah either. Um, I don't know. I like to... It's, like, it's satisfying work, you know. You plant, like for me, I plant the seed, Avery sprays it, then I fertilize it, and then we get to come back and harvest it and see our... You, you see the reward for the work you put in. Yep. And what I, I like is the challenge of pushing your crop further and seeing, you know, basically trying to get more yield out of it, but without breaking the bank, without hurting your profit margins. You know, it's, it's a, it's really hard and it's, you know, obviously if it was easy, everybody would do it, but it's, it, you can go out there and put corn in, a seed in the ground and it will grow and produce something but it's getting it to produce the most that you can. That's the fun part. It's it's challenging, but it's a fun challenge. Yep. I like the animals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, my favorite part about like being at the farm is I definitely like being in like, the calf barn and by the animals and stuff and like being the caretaker for them because you know that they're like in, like it's up to you to take care of them and provide them the best care that you can. And that's what I really like to do is be involved with that and giving them the best care and doing what's right to take care of them and everything. Um, okay, my last question for you guys is what is your favorite pop culture trend or thing that's like trendy? Going to bed? Oh. That is not pop culture. Do you know what pop culture is? No, I don't. Like, Give us yours and maybe I'll think of one. Yeah. Um, well, my goal this year is to be a sourdough girly which is like what the <laughs> it's trending on tiktok it's I for the it. yes it is for the, my free the bread page, maker on our front porch says otherwise you don't use you don't use a bread maker for sourdough <laughs> is it not bread no okay i've watched so many tiktoks uh, okay. on this mm -hmm. Anywho, it's Excellent. trendy on my for you page to be a sourdough girly and make you don't sourdough trendy bread. On my, for you. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite pop culture trend is when uh, the girls dress their moms up like them. That's my on my for you page. Why is that on your for you page? So I like hot moms. Like, what do you want me to say about it? <laughs> you asked. That's actually it. Heavy. <laughs> you asked a question. What did you want me to say? Is that a pop culture trend? I mean, I, I guess. Did. I've seen yeah. that. Yeah. Mason, I'm sure you've seen it. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> As you just said verbatim what the trend is. Yeah, I mean, he was well, just I heard about it. That, I told him that. And he was just, you know. You guys are the worst. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap this up. I promise this will be better, better when I have better company. Aren't you going to ask who you would like to see on That's your That's what I'm getting at. Oh, this okay. will be better when I have better company that actually wants to have a decent conversation, unlike these hooligans. So please comment below if you have any people you'd like me to interview young people in agriculture, learn more about their stories, learn more about who they are. Basically, anyone will be better than these two, so. Wait, you're not going to ask me who you want. You should ask us who you want. We want you to interview. Okay, next. who do you want me to interview next? I want you to go out to Larson Acres and interview Brookie <laughs> Cookie. <laughs> okay, Brooke trusts them. We're coming for you. You got somebody? No. You don't want to throw somebody under the bus? No. Make her deal with her? Make them deal with her? It's no, just because Mason doesn't I, I, have any friends I or any... I, I don't have friends, no. You're right. You should interview your friend, Lindsay. Your only f one and only friend. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. Talk yeah, about crop, crop insurance. insurance. The other side She's of an it. adjuster. Yeah. See where the money is. <laughs> yeah, see where the money in agriculture is. Okay, well, anyhow, comment below people that you'd like us to interview, me to interview specifically, because these two... Um, are not great participants. 
I feel like this went flawlessly. Or the you other. I don't like it because we roast you. Yeah, yeah, I know. The other thing is, is we'll be going to ship Shawana for a tractor pull next week or we'll be in a very long car ride to Louisville semi ride vehicle ride to Louisville in February so if you have any questions you'd like us to answer in a Q&A video during any of those long drives leave them in the comments below and I'll force these two to answer them and maybe I'll answer a couple too do you go do a little live action on the way to ship Shawana I could go live. I don't think anybody cares that much. No, we'll Nobody just do cares. a Q&A video and hope that <clears throat> people beyond our family and friends watch it. Anywho, <laughs> thanks for watching this. Let us know any questions you have or who you'd like me to interview, and we'll catch you in the next video. See you next time.